down. Tear sideways. Tear, up, tear sideways. Okay, I I'm recording. Just oh. so you know. Hi, welcome to the teardown. What's your name? I'm Joe. That's cool. Joe works here. Um, he's an industrial designer. Yeah. He's really great. And uh, he was like, you guys just take things apart. Why not put something back together and make it better? <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, we're going to fix my old iPod. Uh, this, as opposed to other episodes, it's not about tearing a new product down. Um, this, of course, is an old iPod. What year is this from? 2006. Okay, so it's almost 10 years old. When did you get your first iPod? Oh, I had the very first one, the 5 gigabyte. Okay, so there's two problems with this for you right now. The battery life has, has decreased over the years. Yeah, over the like, what is it, 12? Yeah. The long time. <laughs> and then your amount of like data or, or your, your music uh, has increased a lot, so it doesn't fit all of your stuff anymore. Yeah, plus the hard drive that's in there is going to make the battery life shorter because it is an old hard drive that moves. Cool. And where did you, <clears throat> where did you get this repair kit? Uh, part of it is from eBay. I don't know who makes this. The Flash Quad, and the other part is from iFixit. They sell repair kits and the batteries for this thing. Still, so, one of the few people selling batteries that won't make your iPod explode because they're fake. Uh, we are going to open it up and do a modification of it. So this is not a tear down. It's, it's more a tear sideways. It's a tear sideways, and then maybe a tear up. Build up. Build up. Tear down. Build up. You ready for the reveal? Ready okay. for the reveal. Yeah, so you spudge it and then you wave your hand over it three times. <laughs> Just and to make sure. I'm Try not to tear Apple a living cable. Sold Get people a hard drive with. Uh, list. That, that was it. The most of this heft is just from the hard drive. They ran everything through flex cables, which is interesting because it's really hard to get. And from what I understand, it's hard to get a good audio signal mm. through a flex cable. But it looks like they did the amplification maybe right next to the audio jack. I see. Yeah. Um, it's cool. It doesn't look super different than. Hmm. You know, technology that's, oh god, 13 years? 13 years newer. What, cap what capacity is this hard drive? This was 30 gigabyte. Okay, got it. Which was mind-blowing at the time. Right. Well, for a few reasons. One, the capacity, and second, the voltage that it operates at. You can see it says 3.3 volts here. So the whole idea of like a low-power, high-spinning, um, we're skipping steps. Hard drive was kind of new. So uh, before we disconnect the hard drive, we should disconnect the front from the back. Okay. okay. Hi, Dad. Uh, I'm on TV right now with my bosses. <laughs> what channel is this going to be on? YouTube. YouTube.com. This is going to be on YouTube.com. Okay, cool. So like defusing a bomb. This stuff is also cool. They had uh, instead of gluing the hard drive like they did the battery, they have this little rubber holder yeah. that would like really push it up against the sides to stop it from shaking around. Mm -hmm. Shock mounting. And then it's also foam taped. Right. To keep it in there. Because yeah. one of the best ways it used to be in the old days, it wasn't about breaking your screen, it was about shocking the hard drive. When you so you would it. drop the iPod, and then it would give you the sat, the flashing folder. Mm -hmm. Right. Also, keep in mind this thing's spinning, so mm. with the foam tape, it kind of isolates the spinning bits from the All device when you hold it, so that, you know it doesn't feel like you're holding yeah. a spinning disc. So this is probably the first time this drive is seen like broad daylight in 13 years, so it feels a bit like a time capsule. Um, it is a perfect mirror. That's not what I thought it would have looked like. So we got the iPod apart. It's split into two halves. Uh, the front of the iPod is this 
uh, co-molded, uh, clear plastic and white plastic, and then it has screwed to it this magnesium frame. The magnesium frame traps the PCB and the screen. Uh, the screen is this beautiful white module. I wish they still made things like this. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, really similar to a contemporary electronic device, everything's connected with ribbon cables. Mm -hmm. And then on the back side, uh, we have this uh, stainless steel shell. Um, it's got some laser welded uh, latching components around the edge that fit with the magnesium and plastic here. So it just snaps together. It's probably the most beautiful snap fit that's ever been designed. Um, and it's a design that uh, is used in a lot of products today as well. So screwed into a couple of the welded steel components are uh, the hold switch and the microphone, which are on a common flex cable. And they did all the amp stuff around the microphone uh, so that they didn't have to run it on like heavier gauge wire from the main PCB. Cool. And then attached to the back is this battery. It sat down here. It's a lithium ion battery, not a lithium polymer battery, which is a small distinction. And then we have the hard drive. These are all the components of that. Um, this was the spinning, th this is the hard drive, the spinning disc inside of the, um, inside of the thing. And it's, it's so pretty. It's very pretty. It holds 30 gigabytes of data somehow. Um, this is the head that reads it. Um, I don't know, this stuff, like it actually blows me away more than the solid state. This incredible, this arm operates, it has this little coil here, and then this is a magnet that sits inside the design, and the magnet creates a field, and the coil switches, and then this arm can move by like insanely precise increments, and then read that part of the record that you want to. Uh, it's wild to me. And kind of what we've done with solid state memory is we've taken this, which has all of the ones and zeros written on it, and we've made every one and zero addressable. Mm. Um, and somehow we've managed to do that in an even smaller space than this magic spinning disc. What else is crazy in here? They've got these tiny pretty little plastic clips that keep the cables managed. There's a bearing inside here that's the smoothest bearing I've ever seen in my entire life. Mm -hmm. Probably the engineering that just went into that tiny little bearing required like a dozen engineers, like <laughs> a couple years. Just all of this is evolutionary and incredible. It's so sad that we don't need it anymore because... Forget all those mechanical parts. We have this tiny, tiny little micro SD card that will hold more than four times the amount of memory. And we're going to place that into this, which could hold three more, but there's one caveat for replacing it. There is a certain number of songs that that iPod can think that it has. So even uh, if you put four 128 gigabyte cards, it would only read up to, I forgot how many thousand, and then it doesn't know that it has the other ones. Huh. So if I were replacing this with the 80 gigabyte card, uh, iPod, then uh, that number would be higher. But I only want 128 anyway, because that's already insane, and mm -hmm. yeah. Huh. So now that we've taken this all apart and installed the memory in the new, um, I guess, hard drive component, we're going to reassemble all of this into a brand new, better, better. Card. Great. Let's do it. Assemble. Go. Assemble. Terra. Oh my God! It's so cool now. Wow! <laughs> it looks just like an iPod, but like with future technology. <laughs> So this is the memory area, the new hard drive, and the new battery. Cool, and now we're gonna plug in the new battery while turning the thing over. Yeah, and then it's gonna give me an error message saying it doesn't know where its brain went. This is charged. There we go. Yeah! Yay. Okay, it it's lighter now, and it doesn't rattle. Yay! You're welcome. Yeah. Oh wow, that is way lighter. It doesn't, ah. Whoa, that's so weird. Oh, that's crazy. That was fun. That was fun. I, I, I wish that I had all the iPods I broke in the past and then I could put new SD cards in them and then they'd be amazing and I'd sell them on the internet as retro tech. Um, this was a great idea, Joe. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, for fixing this. And uh, yeah, the lesson is take apart your old stuff. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.